What's going on guys? Going to do another live Q&A and um, I'm here at the Underground Strength Gym in Manasquan, New Jersey and uh, I'm waiting for Tim to stop by, T-Grip Barbell Company. And uh, years ago I saw the T-Grip Barbell starting to get used on the uh, West Side videos. So uh, he's stopping by, bringing a couple barbells down, going to put them to use. Um, me personally, that's what I utilize a lot of. I'll show you guys actually um, a little uh, footage of the specialty bars we've got here. I use them often because of my shoulder. And um, athletes in general, I'm going to say this past you know, five to eight years, they are less mobile. They're less athletic than ever before. Whereas eight plus years ago, it was just a straight bar. We didn't have safety squat bars and Swiss handles and T handles to accommodate everybody's shitty positioning. Um, but it's the way of the world now. More technology, less strength. <laughs> that shit is scary. So take, we have a safety bar here. Inside here, we've got a bunch of different bars. This is the uh, diamond trap bar from Sornex. Black Widow training gear, uh, Swiss bars. This one's actually from Elite FTS. Here's a uh, early version from uh, Black Widow training gear. Thick handle in the middle. The ones I have at Scotch Plains have thick handles. This is an Ivanko bar. Pretty goddamn rusty, unfortunately. Uh, I was inspired to buy this after the guys on uh, Sorenex years ago were inclined benching with this thing with like four plates on it. Of course, we got the Intec trap bar, the mf -er right here, open in the bottom. You can see this, guys, is the original Hatfield bar. Okay, this was probably uh, built in the early 80s. You could obviously see the old school type padding. So that's what we got going on here. So as I wait for Tim, um, let's answer your questions, guys. What questions do you guys have? And um, I'll answer. I think I've got about 15 minutes. So what do you guys got going on? And my plan for using these uh, T-grip barbells today, floor press with chains. I don't go crazy heavy on my pressing. Uh, I've got basically a destroyed labrum, but I'm able to do push-ups, pull-ups, and move pretty well. I'm at a point in my life where um, I'm not getting any more surgeries. And my buddy said to me today, he goes, why do you think certain people get injured? I go, I think there's a lot of things. It's our lifestyle, it's how hard we train, it's our genetics, some people, train going by. Some people are more prone to injury uh, genetically. Some people could train like shit, move like shit, eat like shit, you know, get shot and still not get injured. So there's a lot of, you know, things up in the air as to why we get injured. And, um, you know, I've been training since age 13. Does that mean you're going to get injured? No, but there's bumps and bruises along the way and shit happens and I don't make excuses for it. You know, I still do work. So let's get some questions, guys. I did see a lot of great questions for tomorrow when I, uh, I'm gonna do a podcast. People were asking me business stuff, training stuff, training to be dangerous, so mindset stuff. And uh, I'm gonna tackle a lot of that stuff too. I uh, wanna give you guys a heads up. We're gonna keep this a little bit more of an invite and to a specific type of person, but Marty Gallagher and myself, Marty, um, author of The Purposeful Primitive and Strong Medicine, you know, trainer of Ed Cohn, Kirk Karwaski. We're going to be doing a seminar together um, at a barn gym, and uh, him and I are going to start doing a little more in person stuff, seminars, teaching clinics together, and uh, really uh, crafting it to a specific type of person, mindset wise. Goal, goal, goal oriented, oriented wise. Um, so we're gonna do military, serious law enforcement, and serious strength enthusiasts. Uh, question is, first question, how do I know when I'm overtrained? If you're asking, you're probably starting to feel the effects of not feeling as motivated or even that motivated to train at all. You're feeling tired, um, you're craving, you know, uh, sugars and snacks and shitty food that you normally don't train. You might be very tired, yet you feel like it's uh, difficult for you to fall asleep. 
So if you're feeling like you are run down, um, take a couple days off, three, four days off, maybe seven days off, and uh, dial in the nutrition. Clean up your eating habits, drink a little bit more water, get one big salad a day. I love having a Greek salad, but start getting in those vitamins, those minerals, increase your water intake, could be a little bit dehydrated, and just give yourself a break. The other thing I like to say is get outside, get some sunshine, get some vitamin D, and um, give your body a break from coming into the gym. If you normally train in the gym, right, a gym setting like this, I went through that about seven years ago or so when I created the Bodyweight Bodybuilding course. All I was doing was going to like playgrounds. I'd find, you know, an elementary school or, or a park, and I would do my uh, bodyweight exercises and dips and parallel bar hand walking. And I felt tremendous. I would go mountain biking a couple days a week. I didn't touch a barbell for six months. Felt awesome. Uh, bare bone strength, will that seminar have application? As far as it is being, have an application, what I'll do is I'll announce it through the, uh, through my uh, emails, you know, zachemnish.com start here. And uh, then what we'll do from there is just kind of say, who's this for? And uh, give people the opportunity to email me uh, to get the sign up link. I'm not gonna do the bullshit of like announcing it all over the place, crazy hyped up marketing, begging people. You know, I'm basically done being around uninspiring people, just done with that. So uh, looking forward to uh, how this is going to be. Marty, of course, going to discuss the squat, the deadlift, teach it. Uh, probably gonna have Kirk Karwaski there. And um, gonna be very cool, man. Gonna be very cool. And then I'm gonna um, talk about how I apply those basic lifts for athletes, how to work around some of those basic lifts when you're injured. So different ranges of motion, specialty bars, uh, unilateral training, something I'm big on for both upper and lower body, body weight training, and of course, all different kinds of carries. And it's gonna be more of a, uh, you know, a general template of what we want to teach, and then we want to hear from what the attendees want to learn, and we're going to kind of craft that curriculum towards what they want. Uh, adult beverages <laughs> to keep the mood going, and that's it, man. Um, I train, uh, D. Ren says, do you primarily still train with bodyweight style? If you see my videos, you see me still lifting heavy. Um, I don't film too much of the bodyweight stuff, but I'm still doing a lot of pull-ups, a lot of push-ups. Um, I don't do as many reps as I used to do because of the shoulder. So I also change the tempo, change the speed of the exercise. So slow motion push-ups, different kinds of push-ups. My pull-ups are different grips. Um, so yeah. Ryan, it would be good to see you, my man. I still have your shirt, I love it. Any other questions you guys got? By the way, this, this shirt is from my buddy, uh, Wes Whitlock, Disciples of Iron. I love this shirt, <laughs> I'll never forget. I think I was down in, uh, I may have been down in North Carolina um, at, uh, when me and Travis Mash were doing a seminar and uh, I may have been like going in to get like some trail mix or something. I remember waiting online and this guy was a bit like, he seemed like he was a bit fried out and he was like, read the shirt, he's like, coffee and Kalashnikov. That can't end well, <laughs> that's what he said. So uh, Wes Whitlock, Disciples of Iron, Rogue American Apparel. Great stuff over there. I actually just ordered um, my wife, my daughter, and my son a bunch of shirts from then, uh, their favorite one is the one that says stand for something. So good stuff. Um, let's get some more questions. What's a general template for size and strength? Rich, I would go a uh, three day program. I would hit lower body one day. Let's go, let's go with a Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And I would go with an upper body focus day. You could do sleds on both lower and upper body day to get some cardio in. Then on Friday, do a full body day with some odd objects and some high reps. So a little bit of like strongman and carrying um, and high rep work. So that high rep day might be four or five different kinds of carries. So rack walks, sandbag carries, farmer walks, uh, maybe shouldering some stones and sandbags. 
and then you're going to do some rep work. So uh, that rep work might be um, some high rep uh, benching with high rep barbell dumbbell rowing. Then maybe a circuit of like body weight push pull and uh, back extensions, abs, arms. So uh, could even be more of like a circuit. So what I do inside, if you're, um, if you go to ZachEvnish.com, my online training program is called Gladiator Strong. Fridays are sometimes max out Friday. So we're doing cleans and deads and squats, or it's kind of a gut check Friday. I'll pick like five exercises and do five rounds. And it's more of like a fast and furious conditioner slash mindset slash muscle builder. So I like to do those circuits that blend a couple of different qualities together. Any tips on, on cutting weight for wrestling? You know, my uh, belief on that is if you, so our college guys have to really be hovering within five pounds at all times of their weight. Our high school guys, I tell them, you know, if you have to skip, if you can't eat breakfast, lunch, dinner on the regular, then you're cutting weight. And really, what does that say? You've gained too much fat. You may have trained incorrectly, so you didn't put on the muscle, or you didn't train at all, so you're ducking the competition and thinking, if only I'm skinnier than everybody else, I could outmuscle them. Um, Chaitanya says, shouldering stones is the secret. I love shouldering. I'll show you guys, we have a bunch of different med balls here. Heavy medicine balls. Uh, they go from 20 to 150. And then we've got sandbags all piled up here. Also light sandbags up to 150 um, on the bottom. You know, you could flip tires if you want to on your strongman day, but I love doing a lot of carries. And uh, when I carry, I'll do different. Uh, if you kind of dig back to an Instagram from a week ago, I'm carrying the center mass bells, but instead of my hand in the grip, my hand is here, so finger strength. And I think I'm carrying that, a 70 with a 106. I also like to carry dumbbells, one arm dumbbell carry. That's a 150 right there. These are fat grip dumbbells. And if this audio ends up making it to my iTunes, Strong Life Podcast, uh, you'll have to go on uh, my YouTube or my Zach Ebnish site to see what I'm talking about here. And of course, you've seen a lot of videos of us carrying, doing farmer walks with that trap bar. Um, D. Ren says, I'm doing your bi weight program now. It's getting my conditioning up. Being a bigger dude at 230, oh yes, it's definitely going to be tough. So, what you're probably going to do is instead of a lot of those pull ups, you're probably doing recline row. And what happens is the body weight training inspires you to lose weight, to get leaner, because you move better when you're lighter. You're going to do those calisthenics much better when you're lighter. That's really the truth. So, but I don't like to use that as an excuse. What do I tell the college wrestlers? I go, you light guys can't say I don't get to lift heavy because I'm not a big guy. And you big guys can't say, oh, I can't run good because I'm not light. Hey, strong is strong. Uh, years ago, I had a kid training at my gym, college football player, offensive lineman, 275, rope climbs with no legs, handstand push-ups, and uh, the dude just did he got strong, and we said strong is strong. When he got out of college football, he got down to about 215. I have a good before and after photo of him uh, at the Underground Strength Gym website. His name is Andrew uh, Dupox. Um, I think um, his name, he's Haitian, so the last name is actually would be pronounced Chapu. But uh, this kid was awesome, I loved him. 275, he got big, that's what the college wanted him to do, that's what they needed him to do. And he was always like, dude, I can't wait till college football's over, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get ripped. And uh, when I shut down and moved the Edison underground, uh, I sold my Sornex rack to him for like 100 bucks. <laughs> so uh, it, I was glad it went to him because he took care of it and put it in his basement and I knew it was gonna go to a guy who was uh, gonna use it and put it to use. So, good stuff, man. What else you guys got? Any other questions? There's been some great questions on the uh, post for tomorrow's podcast. So, if you catch this and it's not live and you catch it during that 24-hour period and you want my uh, answer to your question, go to that uh, post where I say, hey, comments, questions for the next Strong Life podcast. 
Let's get another question or two, guys. 130 here. It's a beautiful day. It is beautiful out there. We've got some great weather. Nice day. You guys can see the back of my gym. Backs up to the railroad tracks. The internet doesn't work too hot outside. Uh, ideas to build diet discipline? Shelby, I saw that question. You know, I really think it has to be something important to you. Um, I'd, I'm not like fired up to have six pack abs. You know, I want to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich whenever I want to. Um, and I just want to eat and be strong and I'm more just performance based. You know, when I was a bodybuilder, um, setting that goal and competing in a bodybuilding show, really, uh, I was so locked in. I mean, the things I did and the discipline I had from, you know, 11 p.m., I didn't care what was going on. It was lights out and I'd lay in bed. I couldn't fall asleep sometimes till midnight, but 11 o'clock, lights out. 7 a.m., wake up. Even when I was in college, I may not have always had an early morning class. I think one or two nights a week I had a uh, 5 p.m. or 7 p.m. class. I still woke up at 7 to get that first meal in, to get uh, my six meals every day in. Six weeks out, I was eating eight meals a day. What else, guys? Should be crushing questions. Crushing. And hopefully everybody subscribed on iTunes to the Strong Life Podcast because you got to get your brain exploded. <laughs> Sometimes I say crazy stuff on there. Questions, baby. Somebody asked me, uh, you know, the layout of the Underground Strength Gym. We got about 2,200 square feet here, uh, a lot of weights. You know, I need to set up this rack a little bit and move that trap bar out of the way so we could squat here on the regular. Uh, squatting with the iron plates, ain't, nothing sounds more beautiful than that. And uh, look, we've got five sleds in here. We just kill these sleds. And uh, just got the Sornex Root Hog from a buddy of mine. I traded him my Prowler. I said, hells yeah, I'll get this. So I ordered the uh, Root Hog attachments. They should be coming in soon. Gonna have to replace some of those bands. They're starting to get their, their asses kicked. And uh, this area here, you know, we use the tires, not a crazy amount. And uh, I want that belt squat, the athletic training protocol from Westside. Actually ordered one for the rest team. Should be coming in in about a week. And uh, I want one here. Questions revolve around body weight training because I'm tired of feeling beat up from only going heavy. I want to know if a lot of these bigger dudes you trained were able to gain more mass with purely body weight training. They gained a, a different kind of muscle, you know, they all leaned out um, because they were inspired to do so. They were tired of feeling beat up like you did. And their goal wasn't about getting huge. You know, if you're gonna train with calisthenics, you're gonna put on more of like a leaner muscle. You're gonna feel more athletic. Whereas when you're lifting the heavy weights, you feel strong, you feel powerful. You feel a type of, you know, uh, alpha. You feel a type of alpha to your, to your mind that takes over the mind and the body. So it's a different kind of training. And there's nothing wrong with taking a break from destroying the free weights and uh, a little bit maybe destroying your body. You know, your body's telling you obviously, hey, I need a break, so take a break. And then when the body starts saying, you know what, I'm ready for some free weights, go ahead and throw in some barbell speed work. So maybe bang out, you know, five by three, five by two, 10 by two of some benching, some deadlifts, some box squats, and then do your body weight work. And then little by little, get back to having a more of a blend of free weights and body weight. Threw my back out warming up on deadlifts with 185, which I could easily press over my head. Yep. I want you to go and uh, I repost a lot of their videos. 
on uh, my Instagram. And uh, shit, dude, I forget like actually the name of the guy that I keep reposting. But uh, they do a lot of like prehab rehab stuff, but you're going to have to do a lot of stability work for the abs. So definitely reading up on Dr. Stuart McGill, um, doing the bird dogs, doing the side planks, do some unilateral carries. So one arm farmer walks, one arm rack walks. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, plank variations. So plank, reach, come back, reach with the other arm, get in the top of a push up, opposite side shoulder touches, two seconds each side. So stabilizing those those back muscles and if your hips are too tight that sometimes throws off your back so doing the couch stretch incorporating that rear foot elevated split squat or the Bulgarian split squat whatever you call it and you got to kind of rebuild your body and fix up those imbalances Nicholas Barone says and I never could get full I could eat meat all day I tried eating veggies they don't they don't stop my cravings any tips I'm trying to lean down I think that uh, you want to look, you're probably not loading up on veggies. So you might need to add more fats. You might need to add more fats, healthy fats, avocado, some oils, some whole eggs, olives. But you know, when you're having your uh, lunch and dinner, maybe it's a big salad with the meat on top. Uh, Panera actually has a great Greek salad. And I got a Greek salad from them with grilled chicken, and I was full for a long time. So food for thought is I think sometimes we think we're eating enough veggies, but it's not. You need maybe a big plate of salad to fill your body up, get that fiber in your body. Coach Pritch in the house. I think I've got a couple more minutes before Tim gets here from T-Grip Barbell. I'm excited to test drive his barbells out. Coach Pritch, hope everything's going good for you with teaching and coaching. Prep period, of course. Yep, Tim is going to be here in a minute. We got a last question here, guys. Anything? What you got? Prep period, Pritch. Prep period, baby. I'm highly considering, people ask me, any regrets I have, highly considering going back into teaching um, and making the underground strength gym, at least the one here in Manasquan, totally private or inaccessible. Um, that's definitely something I, I think I regret, is that there's so many coaches everywhere, parents, they don't really care about the results, they just want closer and cheaper. And uh, my way is really not to compete with the fakers, but to just remove myself from that world. It's not something that inspires me or excites me anymore. Last question, is it normal to not feel anything after maxing out on deadlifts? I did a max out session, 500 pounds at 165. Yeah, for some people it doesn't, it doesn't beat up the body. For other people, they feel like they can't walk for a couple of days, so. You, uh, we all have different recovery levels. I was thinking to myself earlier, about two years ago, uh, we held a seminar here and Brandon Lilly was here with Chad Smith and people were rotating between um, nutrition, squatting, and deadlifting. I think they benched too. And I stayed at the deadlift session and went through it two times in a row, building up to like 475, 495 twice. I felt fine, barefoot, no belt, nothing. If I did that today, you know, today I can't even deadlift that weight. I haven't been doing much deadlifting because it does beat me up a little bit. So I've been changing the way I train. Lewis says I max all three lifts the same day. And the next day I was expecting to be sore, but no, nothing. I feel like I got a full body massage. Well, it also, if you're not doing the, the sometimes that very heavy work makes people feel shot. Sometimes the high reps makes people feel kind of destroyed. Sometimes, you know, lifting heavy kind of gives you a jolt of energy, makes you feel better, makes you feel great. Um, I know I felt that way probably six, seven, eight years ago. I'd lift heavy and I'd feel, boom, I loved it. Now, it's a little bit more of like a moderate lifting on those big uh, exercises. So anyway, guys, I'm gonna hit the road. Thank you guys for uh, 
dropping in and dropping your comments. I'm going to try to pull the audio from this and put it up on the Strong Life podcast as a bonus. Um, go to ZachEmnish.com. Check out all the articles I've been posting. I've been putting up a lot of videos there as well. And uh, hit the start here button. If you're not on the newsletter, you're missing out on, on something I do. I send out an almost daily email to fire you up and, and educate and inspire you guys. And I think you'll love it. So that's it, guys. Oh, last thing. As of now, it's Tuesday. Tomorrow night, the online underground strength code certification, the sale is over. So I believe that uh, my partner is Nesta and they do a pretty heavy duty discount. Very, very affordable. You have basically lifetime access to it. You don't have a deadline to take the exam. So undergroundstrengthcert.com. Peace out guys. Thanks again. Much respect.